word of prayer. Dear God, we thank you for this time that we can study your word to get to know you. We pray that you help us to be, to have hearts of good soil, to pick the seed and to be able to grow for you. Jesus, name we pray. Amen. You know, we've been going through a series. I don't know if you've been keeping track, but we go through a question at a time called the Catechism. Remember we started that a long time ago? It's called a Catechism. It's a question and an answer. So, actually, we are on question 23. Whoa. Um, last time, last time, Uncle Aaron asked you um, a question about Jesus. He said, did Jesus go to school? Yeah. 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 The answer is yes, right? But that's kind of a trick question, right? Because some of you like, well, I don't know if he really went to school because he's God and God has to go to school. So, I actually kind of like, know them. Yes, I know. And we know so, the here's, well, that's why it was kind of a trick question, because if God knows everything, did Jesus have to go to school? But the answer is yes. Why did Jesus have to go to school if he's God and already knows everything? That Jesus had to go to school, not so that he can just blend in with everybody else, but because he was born as a baby, as a human being. He grew just like us because he's 100% human. He had to grow and learn things too. And he had to eat. He got tired. He um, gets thirsty. We know that from the Bible. So he was human 100%. Now here's the question I want to ask you. He was human 100%. The question is, did Jesus know the future? Yes. 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 How many of you would say, you know, Jesus did not know the future? Okay, Jesus did know the future. Can you think of places in the Bible where Jesus showed us he knew the future? Okay, he told Peter, oh, yeah, Peter. You know, Peter that he would, he doesn't know him. He knew that somebody would betray him. He knew that Judas would betray him. The whole time he was friends with Jesus, Jesus already knew that Judas would betray him. Jesus did know ahead of time that he would die on the cross. He even knew the exact time because he's throughout his life he says, the hour has not yet come, the hour has not yet come. Then at the end he says, the hour has come. If Jesus was 100% God, 100% uh, human, how come he did not have any sin? This is why he needed to be 100% God at the same time. So why must the re Redeemer, our one who saves us, why must someone who saves us must be truly God at the same time? So that he can be perfect. His obedience and suffering would be perfect and effective. If he was 100% human, yes, like us, we were sin. But he's also 100% God. God does not sin. God cannot sin. Therefore, his life is perfect obedience and perfect suffering. That means when he suffered on the cross, he did it perfectly as a perfect person. He did not. Um, jumping ahead a little bit in my notes. We died. Death came into the world because of sin. Did Jesus die? Yes. But he did not sin. How come he had to die? He put the sin on himself, our sin on him, so that it is as if he sinned. So when God looked at Jesus on the cross with our sin, God is looking at an evil person with all our sin. He he, God was looking at Jesus and says, wow, that's a murderer, that's a liar, that's a disobedient child, that's all the sin that you can name. God is looking at Jesus and says, that's all on him. Does Jesus deserve to die right now with all our sin? No. But he took our sin so that he took that death that we deserve so that he, at that time, died the death of a sinner. He did not sin, but he died the death of a sinner when he took our sin. God knew that Jesus didn't sin, but Jesus willingly took our sin on him. So Jesus, God punished God, God punished Jesus as if 
he said. And that's why it's like, it's amazing, right? God saving us is an amazing thing. Why would you do that? Why would anyone take on somebody's sin when he didn't do it? The Bible would use the term, remember last time, a couple weeks ago, I had an illustration where we put on a jet, when I put on a coat. The Bible kind of uses more of a put on, put off. Put it on the righteousness of Christ. Kind of like the covering the clothing and taking off our sin. So it's kind of more of that kind of illustration rather than a cup illustration. Because he did not fill himself up with sin. It was more of a putting on the sin. Okay. Let me show you a verse. In Acts chapter 2, when Peter was preaching to a big crowd of people, after Jesus died, after he rose on the cross, uh, rose from the dead, after Jesus went back up to heaven, that means he ascended back up to heaven, uh, on the day of Pentecost, Peter spoke to a big crowd of people. And this is how he told them about Jesus. I want you to know what he told the people about Jesus. He said, long ago, God planned that Jesus would be handed over to you. With the help of evil people, you put Jesus to death. It was part of God's plan. God wasn't surprised by it. It was God's plan to put him on the cross. You nailed him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead. He set him free from the suffering of death. And here it is. It wasn't possible for death to keep its hold on Jesus. When we die, we're dead. Death has a hold on us because we deserve that. But death has no hold on Jesus because he didn't deserve it. So he was perfect. Therefore, he has to be 100% God in order to be raised from the dead. Jesus, death had no hold on Jesus because he had no sin. Therefore, he can, God raised him from the dead. So why was the Redeemer the truly God? Because his obedience and suffering would be perfect and effective so that God would raise him from the dead. If he wasn't perfect, 100% God, death would kill him. But because he was perfect, God raised Death cannot hold him down. God raised him from the dead. Jesus must be God because only God can put sin to death for us. Our sin deserved death. But Jesus took it, even though he didn't deserve it. That is the amazing thing about why we love and worship Jesus. This is why we want. But here's the thing. I'm going to show you this verse. Jesus was talking to Martha. Remember that incident in the Bible where Lazarus died? Yeah. Before Jesus raised him from the dead, um, he was talking to his sister Martha. And he said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. You know, at that time, before Jesus died, he was still alive. He already knew that he is the resurrection and the life. He knew that death had no hold on him. He says, I can raise the dead, and I have eternal life. But anyone who believes in me will live, even if they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Do you believe that Jesus has the power of life and death? Yeah. And that when we put our trust in him, we can be resurrected one day too. That is amazing. But it is not only because that he came back to, not only that we believe in him and go on to live in heaven one day, what we mean by resurrection and the life is that we can have the life of Christ now. We live, have Jesus in our life, have Jesus in our heart, that we would live like Jesus. Eternal life in heaven is just part of the process. I live with Jesus now, I live with Jesus into eternity. It wouldn't make sense if I say, well, I believe in Jesus, but I live for myself now, and later on I go into eternity. That's not how it works. We live with Jesus now, with life with him, and into eternity. So that's why when we follow Jesus, it's a life now and eternity. Eternal life is not just in heaven, and life on earth is just now. 
flows and blends together into mighty Jesus. He did have siblings, but they are not. See, do you remember uh, the Christmas story when God told Mary that she would have a baby? Yes. But the baby is going to, that was before she got married, before she was going to have a baby with Joseph. How did she get pregnant without being with a man, oh. without being married? That's where it came from. That's the part that is fully God. This is really hard to explain, but this is a oh, part like two. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gave her the baby. Um, so that that part is the 100% shot. You know, we don't really know exactly how that worked that Mary had a baby um, before she was married and knew a man. But we know that that is the miracle. That is the miracle right there that made Jesus 100% God and 100% man. And that never happened to anybody else. After Mary had the, had jo, uh, Jesus, then she uh, knew her husband, they slept together, and then they had other kids. So all his other siblings are regular human beings. Mary is a regular human being. She wasn't divine or with God or anything. Um, only that God, uh, the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, that Jesus was 100% God, 100% so he is the only one who's like that because he's part of the Trinity, remember? God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. So God the Son who came to earth, he is 100% God. So he's the only one who's like that. Okay, let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you for this time together. I pray for anyone who does not know Jesus that they would believe that you are the resurrection and the life and that you came to give us life now and forever with you. And what a wonderful good news and privilege that is, that you died for our sins. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.